Hello, this is David Use. Uh, I'm here with another how-to video for genealogy basics. And today we're talking about organizing family research files. And when I say files, I mean both the physical and digital files that you've accumulated through your research. Um, I know that things will change with time as you learn and find something that works or doesn't work for you, but try to select a system and stick with it. And I know that I can go a few months between sessions. And uh, so write down or you know sketch out uh, generally how you run, want to run your system of organizing files. That way, when you come back to this and start saving digital images again or a link to paper, you know where to put it and how to label it. And um, how to follow the system that you were filing for. And um, for any paper files and digital files, try to use the same sort of naming conventions. That way, um, your logic in one system applies to the other. And um, just keep adjusting until this really fits your needs and um, just stick with it. Uh, digital files, you know, I, I'm going to tell you my approach. And at the end, I'll give you some links to how some other people have organized their files, uh, both uh, physical and digital. But I'm going to tell you how I do. I have one major folder, and it's over here. So I have a major research folder. So I have my family, and then I have my wife's family. I keep, um, and then within those big groups, I have then um, my individuals that I've been doing research. I do last name first, and then when you do digital um, names, you can put commas in there and print. I put in uh, the birth year of that person, and I do that to uh, people with similar names, especially if you start getting into juniors and seniors and such, uh, you know which generation you're uh, talking about. Um, and then within those folders, and, and I'll, I'll take you over and, and show you the uh, file. I will have the original downloads folder that I've talked in other videos. Um, I might have a photo photo a photo folder. Um, in you know, it just makes sense. Um, like in a William Bunny, which we'll go look at. I have um, folders for major groups of documents that um, have a lot of single sheets, and I. I have to organize and group them uh, to get, group all those uh, entities. And they might not be annotated, but uh, my main folder uh, of, under the name, you know, like uh, William Bunny, the main folder has always has annotated images there that have the citation. Also in this main folder, are my research notes and other tools. I have some spreadsheets to compare censuses to see how consistently uh, uh, people are uh, giving their ages to the different censuses. Um, so I think that, um, let me jump over and we'll take a look at uh, the, um, Folders that I have. I brought in a copy of this. I, I didn't give you the full research. These are examples, but I, I brought over um, real folders. So here is uh, William Bunny, and you can see a lot, a lot of different research and a lot of documents. Um, here's the original downloads folder where I've been downloading original images. Then put citations and move them in here. Um, but you can see, for instance, uh, the pension files, uh, a big one. And 
in here. Um, let me switch this to to a, a details. Uh, but this has a huge number of images. Uh, it had a I paid for somebody to go to the National Archives and pull this, and there's 70, 73 pages. I then have some citation um, notes here. Um, but those are un, um, have no citations. I then create a PDF file. I have a tool to create that. Um, and uh, this then has, I'll open it up here real quick. And to show you that it has citations and then it has the images all grouped together. Um, this is just such a huge file. I don't share that file very often, and I don't attach that in my uh, trees. What I have then is pulled out individual files uh, and then annotated the particular image. For instance, this questionnaire is very important in my research and it comes up often. Um, here is the The, the particular document has, has a lot of important information. Um, and yes, that citation looks way too big for the image. Uh, this is one of the first ones that I had done. Um, and I've made these a lot, uh, lot smaller so it, the citation isn't bigger than the image. Um, so um, what you can see here, let me get back to that folder. So um, anyway, that just gives you some general organization. And then let's go back here. Um, so what I always put in any file is the name of the person, of course. Um, I usually start with the uh, document type so that they start grouping together. And I also, for censuses, I start with the year, U.S. census, and then put the name, and then the last, I put in the uh, document where it was created, what county, state. Um, if the document, for instance, like the census, has a year inherent in the title, but if not, somewhere in there, I like to put when at least the year that the document was created. And I always put the information that is uh, specified on that document. Um, I do wanna go back here about the spelling. I always put in the name as it was spelled in the document. And um, we can take a look at Sarah Cassidy. Uh, Sarah Cassidy had a situation like that, that um, where, here it is, right here. Um, I put in the way that it was spelled in the document and then put in brackets to clarify that it was Sarah. But um, if we open up this document um, and zoom in, what you will find that it was not transcribed incorrectly. What was written by the enumerator was Sore, not Sarah uh, Bunny. Uh, and, but we do know this is correct because of the daughter's name and then in a neighboring uh, house is her son and his uh, family. Located very close by. So we know that this is Sarah, but it was spelled wrong. But I label it again with the name as it was written for the record. Um, then let's go on. Um, one other thing I do with files is I only keep one original or one document. I keep that with the key person, especially if there's multiple people. For instance, in the census, I keep that document, that digital file with the head of family. Um, I use the groom on marriage certificates. 
or the person for which the birth or death certificate was created. So the person who was born, uh, that birth certificate is for that person, not the parent. So I put uh, that person. But then I leave a track to direct the user to the correct uh, folder uh, or where that is. So I have two methods. Uh, the easiest one is a uh, method using a text file. Um, let me show you that in, again, Sarah's uh, and cast, uh, uh, William Bunny. Uh, we have an 1860 census, and the record is here. Uh, I'll quickly um, open that. Uh, but it has uh, William Bunny right here with Sarah and his children. So because I will go over to Sarah, Sarah for the 1860 census, I do not have a file in here for her, but I do have it. I just, this text file has nothing in it but I leave that as a note for coming back here to say this is um, that the file for Sarah is in the William Bunny folder, okay? I do have another method, which is to create links um, to that file. And you can do a straight link. Um, this link operates so that when you open it, it opens up the digital file. Okay, so uh, the simple way to do that is to right click on a file and then say create shortcut. And um, this is the shortcut right here. Let me show you some additional. We'll come back to this real quickly. Um, this is a, if you are not into computers or yeah, this is just technology challenge. Um, just skip this for a little bit here. Just um, um, wait and watch the video. Watch for the slides to change, and then you can come back. Um, this is a real geeky thing, but when I transfer files to my family, if they save all the files onto their disk, none of these links will work anymore because it has to have a, if you look at this, it has to have a specific path uh, to uh, the family. So um, I create what's called a relative reference link uh, to that file. And this is the geeky thing about how to do that. And I'll step through it real quickly. Um, but the big thing is that you put in this text um, into the uh, shortcut. And again, if you're not comfortable doing this, just skip it. This is pretty geeky. Um, but here you go. Here's the shortcut um, works, but what we go, I do is go in there and edit properties. And what I will do is remove all this specific information. And I have, you can uh, go through the uh, clipboards. If you use the Apple logo and V, it will give you all your previous, um, from the clipboard, all your previous pace. And I happen to have uh, pinned this so that this information is always on my clipboard. And yeah, I paste it in. And it's pretty geeky information. And now that I just paste it, I can paste it again. Um, paste and it changes. Now I do apply, okay, 
and what this does is if I send this set of files to somebody, the uh, my once I take this new shortcut, and it's called shortcut two, uh, I'm going to move it, cut that and put it in the Ceres folder, paste. Okay, here it is, and let me reorder it so it's sitting up here. So 18.7, here's shortcut two. And if we go edit properties, uh, you can see now it has this funky little information, but what it'll do is even if I move the location of these folders, uh, it will find that digital file and we'll open it like that. Okay, again, real geeky for the people that are really into computers. This goes back to the old DOS days, uh, how you can move around the graphics. But anyway, um, I digress here. Uh, so now hopefully people have come back after totally ignoring that last little section. Um, uh, let me also say that you will accumulate digital files that have nothing to do with people. Um, the way I've done it is I've created folders around different topics and then maybe subfolders within those topics. For instance, I have a folder about um, publications, uh, magazines, and then within that folder, I have each magazine, digital images of particular magazines, or I have a folder on ed, um, researching um, censuses. Under that, I have like blank census templates. Uh, and then uh, other articles maybe that I've saved around censuses. So, you know, do what you need to do that, that makes sense to you. Um, I also have folders on particular locations. Um, I have folders of when you pick your family tree software that you're going to use, you're going to want to occasionally save archive uh, your data, your, your family tree in some folder. That way, if you have a major event where you've messed up the tree, you can always go back and get that thing. And then optional, um, either have photographs as subfolders of people or have a whole separate section just on photographs. And then you organize that. I have a whole separate um, photograph collection in a whole different place. And then I have a family section within my photo. Um, and the next and last bit is make sure on your digital files that you have a backup plan. Um, I back up regularly. Um, Maybe not as frequently as I should, but every three or four months, I'll back up and uh, save these files in a different location on the cloud. Um, once a year or so, I share my research with key people. That way, if something happened to me, they have a copy of research. Um, but anyway, um, I do keep several, a few versions of all my files out there in the digital land. Um, that's way if I accidentally delete some files, I can go back and retrieve that. Um, and uh, I've also done this, which is leave some simple written instructions on how to retrieve this data so that if something happened to you, people can get to your, uh, you know, the physical books that you have, on your book though, they're gonna be able to get that. Um, you know, I didn't speak much about the physical files other than naming it correctly. I 
uh, am transitioning from paper files where I had a paper file for uh, a folder for each individual. I uh, am on the way to transitioning to a folder and the binders, excuse me, transitioning to binders, uh, each binder has a family name at the spine. And then I'm putting individuals within that family name into the into the binder and then using archival sleeves to hold uh documents individual documents um, most of my research now is digital um, i'm preserving a lot of research that a other relatives had performed before computers and also uh, my own work where I was doing a lot more, uh, even back in the pre-2000, uh, there's a, the, the extent of the database wasn't as large as it now. And I have some records that I got directly from counties. So um, I just have binders. I will say that uh, I'm, in that 90, 95% of my work going forward is all digital. I do not print out anything. I keep it all digital. But anyway, um, the last thing is um, here's links, and I will put this into the, the uh, video file description. Uh, these are links to digital uh, articles talking about digital file systems and then paper file systems and then last uh, photographs. Um, I didn't spend a lot of time on organizing photographs here. And the reason why is that mine are not done very well. That is one of the areas that I have to improve on. I will say the articles from ancestral ancestral findings which is by the way a great podcast series there's only like 5,000 episodes now um, but I used to go on walks download these podcasts and listen and each one is like between five minutes and ten minutes long they're real short uh, covers a huge amount of information but anyway that's a great uh, podcast uh, but they write up and transcribe the sessions and have it on uh, their website here. So, you know, he, he has a real good, oh, you can listen to it um, or, or you can read it, which is um, how to organize family photos. And then the, the last one, this, uh, how to organize you know, these five steps, the real logical, um, I think the biggest takeaway is if they're older photographs, the collection is probably not very big. It would be a relative that has uh, maybe only uh, 20 or 30 photographs. I would be preserving all of them and uh, labeling all of them, putting extra effort, putting them into archival sleeves and uh, putting them in binders. I, for instance, also have the other end of the spectrum that I have my grandmother's photo collection where she, she probably knows who everybody is in the photos, but I have hundreds of photos where I don't really know who's what or who's who. Um, what I'm going to do and the, what I'll do is go through and select representative um, pictures, maybe of people that I know are in the photos. And I will take the digital images of those and maybe preserve this very small sampling of this extremely large collection and and put them in sleeves and label them, give them the description. But then 
I will organize the rest in um, a more general just envelopes, but with good labeling and have have a spreadsheet that generally doesn't account for every single photo, but generally describes what's in these envelopes, especially what sort of family, who took them, and what date range is covered in that collection of photographs, as best as I can determine. Um, but you just, when you get into these couple hundred photograph collections, you just cannot, uh, you cannot uh, digitize everything. You can't catalog everything. It's just overwhelming. So you do the best you can and leave some notes so that you can find uh, these photographs again. Anyway, I hope that helps. Again, if you have any questions, post to the discussion board and I'll be happy to answer. Thank you very much.